Hello again everyone, Mary Rose here at Stitch Bliss Corner on the 16th of July 2023 and this is my Mania video and I'm calling it Mania in July <laughs> because it's taken me from the 1st of May to the 4th of July <laughs> to finish the piece the a secret special piece that I, I've stitched for a member of our family. So what I'm going to do now is uh, go to the video I did of Mania, uh, which takes you right the way through to the end of May, where I've, I started stitching on the 1st, of course, first day of Mania. Then I went through to the end of May and I did a, a recap every day of how far I'd gone with my piece. Uh, and then when it came to the end of May, I continued on stitching to completion. Uh, and uh, I just took still photos each evening for the progress. So you can see from start to finish and to framing because it came back from the framers uh, yesterday. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll do my introductory video today and the conclusion also, so that you can have the entire Mania piece from start to finish. <laughs> so, uh, yes, thank you for your forbearance for waiting. And uh, without further ado, I'll take you across to Mania in July. May the 1st, 2023, and it's time for Mania. And as regular viewers would know, this Mania for me will be a special one because I'm going to be stitching a secret stitch for a, a member of our family. And I'm going to keep it secret until that person has received it. So I'm doing mania but it probably won't be seen until probably in June sometime. It depends on how quickly I can get the stitch done. Now for people who, uh, there are people who read books and they like to read the end before they read the book and they get great joy from that. And there are other people that don't want to know the end of the book um, and are very upset if anyone tells them that before they get to the end of the book. <laughs> but what I'm saying that for is that if you want to actually see what I'm stitching, you can go to the end of this video now and have a look and then come back and see the stages. But for those of you who like to keep a little bit of a secret, uh, then you can just progress through with me this way. So that's I thought I'd just mention that. So here is the Ada that I'm going to be using and it's 20 count. Now it won't be that size, it'll be smaller than that, but I do like to have margins around my work so that I can fit my hoop in okay, uh, you know, with a bit of fabric there for the hoop. So that is the bare Ada ready to go on the 1st of May 2023. I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to show you the colours, the palette colours. So I'll just show you those. That's one. That's page number one. Palette number two there. And palette number three there. So it's quite a nice mixture of colours isn't it? <laughs> so without any further ado I'm going to get going now and I shall catch up tonight. It keeps falling down because it's on the back of my chair. <laughs> That's why it's falling down. Uh, but uh, I shall get started and I really do have to stitch across on the aid of fabric here. I'm going to have to do my down and across to mark my centre 
so that I can start in the center of the work. And uh, we'll see how far I get today. I'm a little bit late with starting, but uh, we'll see how far I get. So I'll catch you a bit later. End of Mania day one. And I mark my center as I said this morning I was going to mark it. That's with some white cotton there. And so the center line goes down. And then I've got the other center line that's already getting very loose, but it doesn't really matter. It's just so that you've got an idea where the center is. You can center your stitching. And uh, what I've done is part of this design is going to be single thread over one, uh, which is what I've decided to do. It's not in the actual chart. The chart is two over one, but I'm doing one over one in some parts and two over two in other, uh, two over one in other parts. So um, in this case, the pink part, you can see that's uh, two over one. And this darker part is one over one. So the reason for that will become clear as time goes on, I promise. Right, so that's the end of day one. So I'm swinging off to bed. Mania day two. Closer there. A bit hard to make anything out at the moment, but time will reveal everything. Catch you tomorrow. Mania day three. That's how far I've got. End of day four. And this is as far as I've got. Just starting here. I'm just starting some single thread over one, um, which is the same as on this side here and the rest is two over one well, there seems to be a shape forming there <laughs> right we'll see how we go tomorrow may 5 that's a little bit of dark stitching going on in there and a little more shaping Catch you tomorrow. End of day six. Not a full day of stitching because Harlequin and I watched the coronation of King Charles III. That's not often you get to see history in the making. And uh, it's such a sacred ceremony, centuries old, so couldn't miss that. <laughs> but anyway, so I did make some progress. So as you can see, it is a rose forming there, uh, but there is a surprise in this piece as well. I won't go any further than that. Day seven, and that rose is quite big, isn't it? <laughs> That's all I have to say today. End of day eight. So we're on the first day of the second week of mania and uh, I've nearly finished this rose I've still got a little bit to go as you can see there and uh, once I've finished that little section just there I'm going to start working my way down and across so um, above the rose up here that's uh, mostly well it is background and it's got all these lovely colors in there so <laughs> I'm sort of looking forward to doing that section as well and you can see how the pink of the rose uh, pops off against the 
the dark background there. And uh, as I've said before, the the background is one over one, and the rows and all the foreground uh, parts of the piece are all going to be two over one. So I shall catch up with you tomorrow. End of day nine. I wanted to finish that little bit there. That's the edge of the work. And uh, it looks as though I've almost finished that rather big rose. Um, it reminds me of a quote by J.M. Barry, who said, God gave us memories that we might have roses in December. But uh, I think with this piece of stitching, uh, there'll be roses all year round. <laughs> anyway, I shall uh, catch up with you tomorrow. Well, this is the end of the 10th day, Wednesday in May. And uh, it's one of those days, I, I did start, oh, well, fairly late in the day, I must admit. But uh, there are days in stitching where you're stitching a lot, but it just doesn't look like you have been stitching a lot. <laughs> so uh, other days you just fly along, and this has just been one of those uh, slower days, as you might say. So we'll see how we go by tomorrow. End of day 11. The days are flying along. <laughs> anyway, um, what I've decided to do, this rose is near, just about finished. There's a little bit here, but I'll do that later. And I've decided that I'll work my way down here towards the bottom. This part I'll probably fill in later after mania, uh, you know, because I don't want it to be boring for you. And I thought, well, that's background. I mean, it's interesting to me because you can sort of see all the different highlights in there from the different colours um, for the background, which is really nice. And uh, down here, uh, uh, some leaves starting. So I thought what I'll do is I'll come down um, and then work across and up. And uh, that's the main part of the, of the piece anyway. Um, at the top up here is, is um, mostly like this, except it's got some more purples in it. So it's really quite nice. I mean, you could sort of say uh, you could have used a hand dyed fabric for the background, but this is really an artwork anyway. And, uh, and also I just think it just gives more, t um, not exactly texture in a way it is texture, but it's that feeling of, something more substantial than hand dyed fabrics can be. I mean, they're, don't get me wrong, they certainly have a place, but in this particular piece, uh, I think the background is definitely worth stitching uh, for the overall feel of the piece anyway. So that's enough of me waffling on. Uh, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. End of day 12. And just under a quarter of the piece has been completed. Um, I have just been working here and I filled that part in and going down and you can see there's there's a leaf there uh, that's appearing and I've left those threads in because uh, I'm going to go straight back to it tomorrow morning um, but you can see with, there's a bit of a trade-off with 20 count Ada because uh, one over one, it, it's a little bit, the coverage is not quite as, de as 
thick. Um, and two over one, it's almost a little bit too thick. But then again, there's a richness in there of colour because it's so densely packed into the um, each square. Uh, so, you know, I think the effect that I wanted is what I'm getting. <laughs> That's a very long-winded way of going about telling you. But uh, anyway, I shall catch up with you tomorrow. Day 13. And uh, we have a splash of colour down here, <laughs> which is very nice. Uh, I have the, the leaf that's sort of curled over. And uh, we're starting to get a bit of headway. So I shall catch up with you tomorrow. Day 14, Mother's Day. And uh, there's a quote here by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. The love of a mother is the veil of a softer light between the heart and the heavenly father. I don't think I could put that any better myself. I hope everyone had a lovely day. Uh, I know I had a very nice day. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll get Harlequin to put a picture of the flowers that I received uh, for you to see. Uh, speaking of which, there's a red one forming just here. And you can also see the outline of a leaf there. So we're coming along. Uh, it, this really is, uh, I'm getting into the rhythm now, I think, um, and uh, it's very enjoyable. Uh, so I shall catch you tomorrow. End of day 15, and uh, roughly halfway through Mania now, although it'll be very much past tense by the time you see this, but anyway, I'm in real time at the moment. Um, and uh, mercifully, <laughs> this rose is a lot smaller than that one. <laughs> so um, I think uh, I'm making reasonable headway there. Uh, I've left my threads out because I'm going to go straight back to it tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, that's as far as I've got. And I'll check in with you tomorrow. End of day 16, and uh, we've got uh, some sepals forming here, which is very nice. Uh, please excuse the threads uh, looking so haphazard <laughs> there, but uh, I think we'll put that in the category of organised chaos. <laughs> and uh, I'll catch up with you tomorrow night. Day 17. And I'm still sort of a little bit bogged down, actually, down there. There's an awful lot of confetti in those sepals there. Um, so we'll just see how far we get tomorrow. Uh, but uh, it's still looking quite nice. Um, very much looking forward to getting over to this side um, but that looks like it's <laughs> a few days away yet but uh, anyway I shall catch up with you tomorrow end of day 18 and uh, there's a bit of progress being made down there um, and that there is um, a, well it's obviously a, a leaf coming um, so we're making steady progress here uh, catch you tomorrow day 19 and there's just been some more filling in of this leaf here um, so progress is being made but it is stitching, so it does take a while. Um, but uh, 
there's some lovely colours in there <laughs> and uh, it's very rewarding so I shall catch you again tomorrow end of day 20 I had a lovely visitor this afternoon so I didn't do a lot of stitching this afternoon <laughs> My daughter came over for a visit, so that was lovely. So we're still labouring here over <laughs> this leaf <laughs> there. And there's a little bit of pink coming in there. <laughs> which, And that'll be uh, made clear what that is in the next few days, I should imagine. So, um, yeah, we'll catch you tomorrow. End of day 21. Already. There are never enough stitchy days, are there? <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, leaf here has got some more definition now because I've put the background in a bit around it. And there's a bit of a stalk there coming. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is all about roses and leaves and stalks. Uh, but that's not the case. <laughs> so I shall catch you later. End of day 22. And uh, work is continuing. Day 23. I've been working in this area here, which has turned out to be quite fiddly. And uh, I lost an hour this morning of stitching time. And what do they say? Lose an hour in the morning and you're looking for it the rest of the day. Well, I think that's what's happened to me today. But nonetheless, I shall be back tomorrow and I shall catch you then. End of day 24. Mania. And I have been still toiling down here. I had every intention this morning of working in this area so I think I'll be doing that tomorrow and uh, see how far I can get. Uh, so I shall check in with you tomorrow evening. End of day 25 and I've filled in a little bit more down here and now I'm working across in this section. So my needle has decided to go that way finally. <laughs> it seems to have a mind of its own at times. So um, anyway, I shall catch up with you tomorrow. End of day 26. Uh, still, well, I've spent a lot of time just finishing that bit off there. And uh, now I'm moving across to here. So in the next two or three days, there should be a significant development. <laughs> so I shall uh, catch you tomorrow. End of day 27. And uh, things are starting to develop over here a little bit. And uh, I'll catch up with you again tomorrow night. End of day 28, and there's a little bit of magic forming over here, and you'll be able to see fairly clearly over the next few days what's happening there, if you haven't guessed already. Uh, so I shall catch you tomorrow. End of day 29. Well, it's the end of the penultimate day of mania stitching. And tomorrow, the last day of mania, I'm going to concentrate on this part here for reasons that will become clear <laughs> at the end of uh, the day stitching tomorrow. And then after that, I won't do any more video of this piece. I'll just do the stills 
at the end of each day of stitching uh, until I've finished. So I'll catch you tomorrow. End of day 31. And I think the mystery is now solved. Uh, it is a little rose fairy, this little mite here. I've managed to put her face in. And uh, although this is the end of Mania, it's not the end of the video because I will go now till the end with the stitching. I'll just keep going and I'll just do a photograph or a still every evening um, so that you can see the progression to the end. Um, as you can see, it's quite enchanting and uh, it, it, this piece is for a child. Anyway, I shall catch you later. Well, here she is, complete on the back of my stitchy chair. <laughs> uh, and uh, she's just gorgeous, isn't she? And I think two of the highlights for me are the little way the petals of her little dress are rolled up and her little legs. <laughs> um, uh, now, I was thinking about outlining and couching uh, even though that's not in the actual pattern or chart but I decided against it because fairies are very much do you see them or don't you see them and I just think she's she's just ethereal enough um, as she is so it won't be too long before you'll be able to see this which will be very good indeed, uh, but she's been a pleasure from start to finish. Here she is, back from the framers, on the back of the stitchy chair, and uh, I just thought I'd give you a closer look from this angle. I'll show you face to camera as well. Now bear in mind that the background 
is all 1 over 1. And the foreground, mostly, is 2 over 1. Just to give that sense of distance there. But it's just so sweet the way she's standing on that stalk there. And uh, I chose the frame and my wonderful framer chose the colour of the mats with input from Harlequin and myself. But uh, she really is quite beautiful. So back to me. Well, she's a little treasure, isn't she? It's actually for a little treasure, <laughs> so that's probably just as well, isn't it? <laughs> uh, now, I do have the frame piece here next to me, and I'm going to hold that to the camera uh, so that you can see um, what she looks like uh, again. <laughs> and here she is. I have a wonderful framer and he's very very he's got a great eye for matte colour and everything. So I just I think I I'll, I'll slip a video in uh just to show you a little bit closer up uh the stitching and everything. But I couldn't be happier with her. So that's that piece done and I shall be sending that off and as soon as they've received it I shall put this video up and uh, all that remains now is to uh, show you the original artwork here and uh, she's a very modest artist she just puts signature down there just the initials and Harlequin oh I'll just uh, give you the stitching information uh, pattern name the Rose Fairy designed by Jolly's cross stitch that's J-U-L-L-Y-S Jolly's cross stitch uh, they suggested Ada 14, Ada 14 cab but I went for 20 count because I wanted her to be smaller. Uh, and uh, what else have we got? Well, that's really all. And then they just give you the palette there. Um, and last but not least, I've just got a little bit of information about Cicely Mary Barker. She's the artist. And there's a picture of her there. Got a bit of a scratchy throat this morning so I apologize for that. Uh, she was born 28th of June 1895 and died in 1973. So I just thought I'd just tell you a little bit about her uh, and then I've got some pictures here of hers. Uh, there was a book written about her and illustrating her work and they have her illustration and then they have a poem next to the uh, illustration. Uh, and um, she was quite a sickly child, apparently, uh, but very artistically gifted. And her father, when she was 15, submitted some of her work to a stationery printer who uh, bought four of her pictures for greeting cards. And uh, after that, uh, you know, various greeting card manufacturers were happy to print her work. And um, her father died when she was 17, and leaving Cicely, her elder sister, and her mother in difficult circumstances. So it was a big help financially for the family that Cicely was able to produce these works. She was also influenced by the huge popular interest in fairies which developed from the Victorian enthusiasm for fairy stories 
and was epitomised by the immense popularity of J.M. Barrie's Peter Pan in the early part of the 20th century, published in 1923. Uh, Flower Fairies of the Spring was well received by a post-industrial war-weary public who were charmed by her vision and hope and innocence which seemed to evoke a less aggressively modern world. Well, how appropriate is that for this day and age? Probably more appropriate, actually. Queen Mary did much to encourage the vogue for fairy paintings uh, by frequently sending postcards depicting fairies to her friends. This popularity saw the publication of Cicely Mary Barker's Elves and Fairies postcards in 1918. Uh, now, it says here that she used real-life models for her paintings. Most of the models came from the kindergarten her sister Dorothy ran in the back room of the house in which they lived. She also painted the children and relatives. One of her models was Gladys Tidy, the young girl who used to came to come to the house every Saturday to do the household work. Cicely always asked the child model to hold the flower, twig or blossom of a particular fairy for she wanted to be sure of the accuracy of her depiction of the shape, texture and form of the plant. Her only alteration was to the size. She enlarged the flower to make it the same size as the child. Her flowers were always botanically accurate. And you can see the beautiful, you know, I mean, the rose, uh, that particularly that pink rose that the fairy is holding, is just magnificent, isn't it? Uh, now, what else have we got here? She, her family was deeply religious and she retained a strong Christian faith all her life. She greatly admired the work of the Pre-Raphaelites and her own work echoes her philosophy of being true to nature, both in her meticulous depiction of flowers and plants and the way in which the fairies represent their spirit. How lovely. Okay, so that's some information supplied by the ever-reliable Harlequin <laughs> for your appreciation. <laughs> and I'll just show you now some of the other paintings that she has produced uh, of the fairies. And at the end, there's a little poem, uh, only four stanzas long. So here is another one of her paintings there and this is uh, the crocus fairies and this is oh uh, pages are sticking together that one there is look at those dandelions jack go to bed at Noon. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. That's a fine one too, isn't it? The Horned Poppy Fairy. The Ribwort Plantain Fairy. The Totter Grass Fairy. Stork's Bill Fairy. The Self Heal Fairy.
the White Bindweed Fairy. That's very pretty, isn't it? Just a few more here. The Black Medic Fairies. That's almost like a Snow White, actually. Reminds me a little bit of her. The Pine Tree Fairy. Look at his little hat. <laughs> That's gorgeous, isn't it? And this is the last one that he's uh, printed out. The Pear Blossom Fairy. And that was the frontispiece of the book that came out of, about her works. And then here is the poem. I'll just wait for this helicopter to go over. You probably can't hear it, but I can. <laughs> but it's very interesting that she used uh, life models for her uh, pictures because this one here is very much like uh, the Rose Fairy that I I've stitched. It's very much like the person that's intended for. You know, if you put a photograph next to that fairy, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference, which is all part of the charm of it. <laughs> right, anyway, here's, here's the, uh, the poem. It's entitled, Where? Where are the fairies? Where can we find them? We've seen the fairy rings they leave behind them. When they have danced all night, where do they go? Lark in the sky above, say, do you know? Is it a secret no one is telling? Why, in your garden, surely they're dwelling. No need for journeying, seeking afar. Where there are flowers, there fairies are. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> so, it certainly harks back to a much more innocent age, doesn't it? But I think you can create your own little fairy world, should you choose to do so, which is pretty much what I've chosen to do. <laughs> And uh, life looks a lot happier and sparklier if you do that, I think. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for your time, for your patience of this unusual mania. So wasn't that a lovely poem to end on? Um, I hope that everybody is doing well and uh, enjoying your stitching. And uh, until next time, uh, it's goodbye from Mary Rose. Bye for now.